Hello everyone, I am Erika of BeadingSchool.com and you are watching No One Has to Bead Alone, my weekly BD broadcast to make sure that every beader all around the world has company. Please let me know if you can see me, if you can hear me. I would like to make sure at first that the technical things are all right. So please let me know. If you can hear me, if you can see me, I don't see any comments yet. So I would like to make sure that it's okay. And hi, Sarah. And then we have a Facebook user friend. And can you hear me, ladies? Can you see me? Please let me know. I hope that it's all right. Today we are going to bead Zuzi's Yaneira earrings. Faye, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Finally, I really appreciate it. Please don't leave me talking for that long without me knowing if you can hear me or see me. It's super weird. Thank you, Faye, and thank you, Leah. And thank you, Jennifer and Ariane, who finally let me know that it is all right. My heart goes like doo -doo 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 -doo, until you don't let me know. <laughs> and of course, if I keep talking and then I finally fix the technical stuff, then I forgot that what did I say? Then I forget what did I say? Why you were not hearing me and I don't know what to repeat, what not to repeat. So then it gets super complicated, but it's okay today. <laughs> and Faye says, it is 3 a.m. here and there is stormy weather outside. Oh wow, Faye, take care. And I hope that there won't be any damage around your house and Antoinette and Facebook user friends. So those of you who are watching from the Beading School Facebook club and not from the page, then you might need to click the link that is exactly above the video to enable my broadcasting program to see your name and see your face. And then I can say, hi, Anita, and hi, Debbie, and hi, Brit Marie, and hi, Marianne, and Natalie, and Kathy is here. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone who is here today. We will continue today to bid our collection of Tatis's treasure earrings from the latest Beading School Academy team box. Or, of course, you can also use your own beads from your own stash that you have in other colors and make variations. It's up to you, of course. Uh, but I selected, we selected all the beads for today's earrings from the Beading School Academy team box. So if you have it, then you can just dig in and bead it right away. Today's design was made by Zuzi. Zuzi, who is on vacation, but Zuzi is online. I see you. She says, hi, Erika, and hi, everyone. And Zuzi spent a week in the beautiful Slovakian mountains eating, I guess, lots of sheep cheese. That is my favorite. And that she brought me last week. Last week, it was already two weeks ago. Oh, my God. Time flies. Katy is here in the meanwhile. Alicia, Sarah. Elena is here, and Sandra, and Gunnar, and Aniko, and Manuela, Joanne, Catherine, other Elena. Zuzi said, I wanted to greet you. I hope you will have a great time beating Yanaira. For sure we will. I have one motive done. I'm looking forward to completing my pair of earring, uh, earrings. Antoinette is asking, I can't see Faye's message. Do you know why? Yes, because you can watch today's broadcast and all of the broadcasts pretty much always at two places, the Beading School Facebook Club and the Beading School Facebook page. Those are two separate places. The club is only for like those of you who are Beading School readers 
and the page can be seen by everyone. And then my clever broadcasting program puts together all the messages and I see everyone's messages and everyone com everyone's comments. But if you are watching from the club, then you see only those that were posted in the club. And if you are watching from the page, then you see only those who were, uh, that were uh, posted from the page. And Jessica, Deb, Malka, Susan, Martin, and Nicolene uh, is also here. And yay, Zuzi had busy two weeks with lots of traveling. But next week, she and Veronica will take care of you, ladies, while we will be on a little holiday with Adam for our anniversary. And now, important story. Stuff. The PDF tutorial for Yanera that makes it easier for you to follow today's video class is already available at no one has to be the one.com. As always, if you head over there, then you have two options. You have an option to download the tutorial for free, and please accept that as my and Beading School's helping hand if you. Need, uh, need to download it for free at the moment. And there is also a five euro support version that you might go for if you would like to support Beading School and the broadcast. In any case, we are really, really, really appreciate it if you decide to hit the share button, if you tell your friends about Beading School, about no one has to be the one. We love you helping Beading School to spread the message and to spread the news that there is something good going on here and that Susie's design is beautiful. And while you are at Beading School uh, at the web page to download the tutorial, then please don't forget now stay with me and be with me. But after the broadcast, please head back to Beading School and make sure to take advantage of our weekly special deal that always lasts, most of the times lasts, from Tuesday 5 p.m. Central European time to next Tuesday's 5 p.m. Central European time. So this week, we offer you 12% discount on all our milky beads, the twist beads, the slender bugles, the half tilas, the quarter tilas, the tilas, the delicas, the round seed beads, everything. The old favorites, the new ones, the added lots of new ones. So look around, there are some very, very pretty ones available. And we also prepared so-called bead bundles for you. So in case of bead bundles, you will need to click uh, only once. And then a collection of beads, for example, in the same shape and in the same mood uh, gets to your shopping basket uh, after just one click and you can check out with an extra discount. Comfy and economical. So, for example, there are bead bundles like half tila in ocean colors or Miyuki twist beads in sun colors or Miyuki Delicas in elegant colors. They are really a good option to stock up on seed beads. So some of them are gone, but there are lots of bundles and lots of beads waiting for you. And let's start beading finally, if I did not distract you too much with the possibility of the bundles. Are you here with me? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> So here is Monica, Corinne. Corinne, I would like to thank you for always sharing when, when there is a class going on. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Big hugs to you. Uh, and then there is Sherry and Liv and Jill and Sharon and Lutka. Brit Marie, who says, I haven't beaded for a month, lost the will and lost the bead. A close family member of mine passed away in the middle of July while I was abroad in Singapore. So after that, I have been out of balance, so to speak. I will try to beat with you all today. 
Brit Marie, first of all, I'm so sorry for your loss. My heart goes out to you and my deepest condolences. And I completely understand that your that your bill to bead was gone for a while. And I'm glad that you joined today. And don't push yourself. Maybe just the company and the inspiration from the fellow beaders will give you a little bit of sparkle. And we are always there and your beads are patient. So don't hurry and don't pressure yourself. So, ladies, let's get started. Thank you so much for all nearly 50 of you beading with me real time today. And let's see what do we need for Susie's Yanera. It's a super cute, super fast design and it is square shaped. You can combine it in many ways and you will need only a few of each of these bead shapes. So for one motif, you will need gem duo beads, four pieces. You will need tila beads, Miyuki tila beads, also four pieces. You will need Miyuki twist beads, the two times 12 millimeter variation, also four pieces, and then a bunch of round 15 Miyuki's in two different colors, round 11 Miyuki, only one piece to the middle, and then some Miyuki Delica size 11s. Ladies, do you have any questions about the material that you need for, uh, for today or the download? From now on, I would like to ask you to please stick only to questions regarding the uh, today's beading. And then at the end, you will have again opportunity to ask all kinds of questions that you are curious about, that you would like to know about next week's class also, because even if I will be away, there will be a class just in a different form. So yeah, more info and more answers coming at the end, but now let's start beading. Ariana says, all is clear. Thank you so much, Ariana, for letting me know. And, 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 shall we start? Let's start. So I will switch to my hand camera now, since it also requires a switch to, uh, for my microphone, then please, again, let me know if you will still be able to hear me when you stop seeing my face and start seeing my hand camera. Thank you. So I'm curious, first of all, if you can still hear me. I hope so. Please let me know. Okay. Catherine says, loud and clear. Ariana also says, still hear you. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much, ladies. And let's get started. So at first, you will need four pieces of gem duo beads and then a bunch of round 15 Miyuki's uh, for, for decorating and for connecting them. So we will start by picking up a gem duo. Okay, I'm a bit clumsy. It seems I right away pulled, uh, pulled out my, uh, my uh, fire line at the other end. And after picking up the gem duo, I pick up five pieces of the round 15s. This is my first color. And then I bead through the second hole of the gem duo. So this is how it looks like at the moment. Then I pick up 
on order round 15, this will be the connection between two gem duos, and I pick up the next gem duo bead. And hi, Katerina. So this is how it looks like. And now again, five pieces of round 15s, four, five. And I bead back through the second hole of the gem duo. So at first, this motif in step one might be a little bit like uh, not sturdy enough for you, the feel of it, but it will get a lot sturdier. It will get super nice, super rigid. It will work also really well on its own, also as an earring. So don't worry, just follow the steps that you, uh, Susie made for you. And then I repeat two more times. So I always put around 15 in between the two gem duos. I pick up a gem duo. I pick up three, four, five pieces of the same color of the round 15s. And then again, around 15. And the fourth gem duo. And hi, Cindy, good to see you. And I finish it off in the same way. So I pick up five pieces of the round 15s. I bead back through the second open hole of the gem duo, and now I connect the last fourth gem duo to the first one again with a round 15 seed bead. So this is how it looks like. Now you can clearly see the square shape. This will be the result, by the way, to also give you an idea how it looks like when it's finished. And hi, Cynthia. So I did not tie a knot, but I'm trying to pull on the tail thread to keep everything sturdy. And then I finish off this step by beading through the very first group of five round 15 seed beads the second hole of the first gem duo, and then through the round 15 between the first and the second gem duo bead. So this is how it looks like. Please let me know if it's going well. For some reason, my pictures got mixed up while I was uploading them. So my apologies. I will always have to look for the next one. <laughs> now I have step two on the screen. And as you can see, I am exiting around 15 in between two gem duos. And then I make the little cross shape in the middle. The little cross, it consists of Miyuki Delicas and a round 11 seed bead. I am using an accent color, the Capri Blue that comes from the box. I really started to love it together with the silver shade and also with the uh, matte blue of the twists and the tilas. So I'm exiting uh, exiting uh, the round 15, I picked up the Delica, round 11 Delica, and now I am beading through the round 15, exactly opposite of the one that I, am, I was exiting before picking up the new beads. And I bead back through all the three new beads. And I finish this step off by 
beading through the round 15 that I've started from. This pulls them slightly more together. And then I continue to a round 15 that is not attached to the middle yet. So I bead through the first hole of the gem duo. I bead through the five round 15s over the gem duo. And then I bead through the second hole of the gem duo and the next round 15 that is in between two gem duos. So this is how it looks like at the moment with the thread hanging from an empty round 15. And now I can look for step three. So how is it going, ladies? I hope everything is all right. In step three, I am finishing off the little cross. So I pick up a delica and then I bead through the round 11 in the middle. I pick up another delica and I bead through the round 15 that is exactly opposite of the one that I was exiting at the beginning of this step. Now to finish off this step, I bead back through delica, round 11 delica. I pull my thread tight and then I continue through the round 15 the gem duo, the next gem duo, and five round 15s on top of the gem duo. So this is the middle of your motif. The little cross pulls the round, around the, uh, pulls the round 15s closer to each other. And Ariana is asking, is there a right direction to pass through the R11 again? Well, it depends. Like there, uh, you can actually pass both ways and then the round 11 uh, might turn a little bit. So yeah, there are actually two ways. And Cynthia is asking, can you please get closer in the camera? I can't see what you are doing very well. Thank you, Erica. Thanks for letting me know, Cynthia. I was actually rearranging my stuff here on the table. So the camera got further away from my bead mat. So I, I will readjust, readjust it to make sure that you see everything well. Is it better now? How do you like it? And back to Ariana's question, important thing is that the thread should not be visible. So be careful about that. But actually with this back and forth beadings, especially when there is a cross, then yeah, you might play with the thread directions. Cynthia says it's better. Sherry is also happy with the view. So let's continue and let's find step four. Oh, and right away. Oh my God, I'm so lucky. And I will be adding now the uh, Tila beads. So, actually, I feel like I will just repeat part of the thread path to make this sturdier and I will, I will uh, start from the next group of round 15s. This is a very personal decision, so it depends on your thread tension if you bead right away at this moment or if you continue to the second group like I did. 
And when you are ready, then exiting the group of five, round 15, you can pick up a Tila bead, a Delica, another round 15, and another Delica. So there are four new beads now on the, on the uh, needle. And you can bead back through the second hole of the Tila bead. After you bead it through the second hole, please bead through the gem duo, the next gem duo, the first hole of the next gem duo, towards the center of the motif, and then bead again through the second hole of the gem duo that you were exiting before picking up the tila. Was this part clear for you? Please let me know. So exiting the five, sorry, you were exiting actually the five round 15s. Then you pick up the Tila, Delica round 15, Delica. You bead through the second hole of the Tila and you bead through the first hole of the next gem duo, the second hole of the gem duo that is under the group of five that you started from. And that's step four. <laughs> okay, Cynthia says it's clear. Faye also, Ariane also. So then I'm really happy. And let's find step five. So this time we will be repeating part of the thread pass. So we bead through the first hole of the Tila. We bead through the first Delica bead. But then we skip the round 15 and we bead right away to the second Delica that we picked up in the previous step. So this makes the little decoration on top of the Tila bead pointier. And we can get in position to add more Tila beads and seed beads by beading through the next group of five round 15 seed beads. So this is how it looks like at the moment. And you can now do the Tila decoration three more times to finish off this part of the motif. So exiting the group of five round 15s, you pick up a Tila, you pick up Delica, round 15 Delica, at this point, I like to leave my beads, let my beads fall where they are supposed to go. And now I bead through the second hole of the Tila and I attach it to the gem duo beads. And I repeat the thread path while skipping the round 15 in between the two delicas. So delica, delica, tila. And then I get in position by beading through the next group of five round 15s. And Faye says, love the way the tilas are anchored, very clever. And I agree, this is such a genius idea from Zuzi. Zuzi, I hope you are still watching. I hope you are still listening to us. And this thread pass, it's really, really clever. And I hope that you already feel that how sturdy the motif already is. I always really like it when I have the opportunity to bead something either from Zuzi or from Veronka, because, well, all of us have a little bit different kind of thinking. With Zuzi, we are actually <laughs> thinking when it comes to beading in a pretty similar way. We know each other for, oh my God, for, for, 
for many, many years, for over a decade, I would say. And we beat it a lot together. Originally, Zuzi was my student. And then she started to teach in my beat shop. And yeah, <laughs> we have so many designs and adventures and experiences after us that that I think also or thinking, oh my God, Zuzi is here and she says 12 plus. Wow. <sighs> and yeah, so often we think in the same way. And Veronka, the third member of the uh, Beating School Creative team, she is uh, she has joined us only recently. She also started to bead uh, later than us, and there her thinking is very fresh and. I would say also very different from us. So that's a very, very nice uh, new addition, her way of thinking to, to, our, to our team. <laughs> oh, Zuzi also read and heard the compliments. So I'm really happy about that. And Nit is asking, so Erica, you had a physical beat shop? Actually, yes, for six amazing years, I used to have a physical beat shop in Slovakia. But then I had the feeling that it's time to move on. And that meant also to move to a different part of Europe. I was already living abroad. I was for two years already in Prague and I was I was running my beach shop while traveling back and forth between Slovakia and the Czech Republic, which were which was not very efficient and not very healthy for me. So so I, I decided that time that it's time to move on. And I actually wanted to do something very different. But only after a few months, I, the beat started already to call me again. And I started to design, like really design bigger things and, and more technically advanced things. And then gradually teaching came to my life again and and then somehow beating school was evolving and it was a very long process again like six seven years six years until it was born again and and I'm I'm very happy with with how it all all turned out <laughs> Brit Marie is asking, what was the name of your bead shop? It had a Slovak name. It was called Koralko Svet. That means bead word. We were actually the first bead shop in, in uh, Slovakia. So that was a pretty amazing experience to, to develop it. So... And thank you for your kind words, Cynthia. And Niti. <laughs> and thank you, Ludka, too. So this is how the motif should look like at the moment after completing the Tila parts. And then let's find step seven. Okay, here it is. Here it is. Now we will be adding four pieces of the Miyuki twist beads. I chose them for Tatis's treasure, by the way, for the box inspired by Greek mm, mythology, because they remind me of ancient Greek columns. So I wanted to give the box that little detail 
to remind us of, of ancient Greek architecture. And let's see what's happening in step seven. So after beading through the tila bead, I bead through two Miyuki delicas, and then I pick up around 15 in the second color, another uh, a Miyuki twist, and then another round 15. And I bead through delica, round 15 delica, and I repeat the same three more times. So I will be connecting the decorations made from Delica round 15 Delica with groups of round 15 twist and round 15. And in this case, next to the twists, the round 15s will be in a, in a different color. But again, it's up to you if you would like to use the same one or maybe you are already using the third color, because actually you can also go for a more playful piece and add different round 15s, also, for example, over the over the gem duos. So there are lots of possibilities offered to us by Susie's motif. Cynthia is asking, how many years have you been beating Erica? Thanks for the question. And actually, I was 22 when I started beading. 21 or 22? 20, I think 22, when I was in the last year of university. And now, oh my god, I did the same, same mistake for the second time. Erica, you should talk less. Please let uh, tell me. Focus on, focus on your beading, Erica. Stop talking so much. So I need to still go through the second Delica before picking up the new group of beads. So I started when I was 22, I think. And now I am 37. So that's about like 15, 16 years of beading. And now I am adding the last group. Oh my God. This is unbelievable. I added the last group again without beading through the Delica. I will stop talking, ladies, because I will never finish this motif otherwise. <laughs> so, Erica, go through the second Delica, please. Yes, it's done. And now you can add round 15, twist round 15, Zuzi, do you approve of it? Is it okay now? <laughs> so after adding the fourth group of beads, I continue until I <laughs> until I am exiting the very first group that I have picked up. I bead through the whole group round 15, twist and round 15. Okay, Cynthia says, I do that a lot. Thank you so much for the consolation because I really started to feel stupid by making the same mistake three times during a live broadcast. <laughs> Once somebody told me like, yay, Erica, I have never seen you frogging. So if somebody would have the impression that I'm not frogging, then look at this. <laughs> you can always return to this video. <laughs> And now, okay, Susie approved. She says it slowly. Thank you so much. It is indeed, Brit Marie is asking, it is a, a, the motif domed. It is a little bit domed. This is how my finished one looks like from this side. And there will be beads on the back that are not visible from the front. And now we are getting to that part. So please turn your motifs to the back side now and continue beading on the back. And I need to grab some more round 11s because when I collected my beads, then I was looking at the front of the motif and I did not realize that I need more round 11s for the back. 
Cynthia says, it is a beautiful motif. I am getting some more ideas to add to it as well. Oh, that's wonderful. And indeed, Zuzi's design is very inspiring. So now it is time to make the motif more domed, as Brit Marie said. So after exiting the group of round 15 twist round 15, I pick up a single round 11 and I bead through the next group of round 15 twist round 11. And I pull together the beads. So this is what makes the whole motif structural and a bit 3D. This is how I bead all around. And this is on the back of the motif. So the round 11 goes on the back of the motif. And talking about ideas, make sure to check out the last page of the PDF tutorial. Zuzi included some great ideas on how to develop this little motif into something bigger by adding uh, several motifs to each other into a pendant, how to make a bracelet. And I'm pretty sure that you will come up with lots and lots of new ideas too. I loved seeing how you were playing with the little improvisation motif after uh, Tuesday's live design during coffee time with Erica. That was a super nice experience for me. Thank you so much for it, ladies. Uh, especially like the last piece that I saw from Elena, Elena Lazovic. Oh my God, Elena, you made me really, really happy. But also Ariana and many fellow beaters, thank you so much for all the playing. <laughs> Katerina says, I think it would be a wonderful bracelet. I agree with Katerina, like, look at this, I have two motifs now, and I think they look exactly as if they were made for a bracelet. By the way, I do have here Tuesday's play piece, <laughs> let's call it play piece, and I added some rhinestones on top of it, I didn't have time yet to show it to you. So I was also thinking that this two different uh, square shaped motifs. They could be even combined together into a bracelet. <laughs> Just an idea for the future. And I have now all the round 11s and I pulled together my twist beads. There are no gaps. The motive is nice and sturdy, but Susie added some extra details on the back. And we are going to do that now together. And I also, this, this is also such a clever, such a clever part, Susie. So Susie is now connecting the front to the back, actually. Uh, so the line of round 15 seed beads, it looks like as if it was like, how do you say, say it when a snake is like, I don't know, uh, snaking. <laughs> is there such a word like snaking? <laughs> so whatever, it's going from the back of the motif to the front of the motif. And I love this little detail. So after exiting around 11 that we have added in between the, uh, the uh, round 15s, I picked up five pieces of the second color of the of the uh, the first color, sorry, of the round 15s, and then I bead through the five round 15s that are on top of the gem duo. For this, only for the part when I am beading through the beads on the on top of the gem duo, I turned to the front because it's for me easier but otherwise I'm still working on the back. And this is how the Niti says, wrangling 
thank you so much. <laughs> but Dev says slittering, Ula says coiling. Oh my god, I have I have learned <laughs> three synonyms. Three synonyms for the movement of the snake already. I love <laughs> the meetings with you, ladies. Thank you so much for for this help. So let's coil or wrinkle or slither some more. And after beating through the five round 15s on top of the gem duo, pick up, please, another five round 15s. You can bead through the next round 11. Actually, it does not matter if you bead through it in the opposite or in the same direction. I like to bead through this in the opposite direction. And then I bead back through the last two round 15s that I have just picked up. So two of the round 15s will always have two thread passes and then I pick up three more and I continue coiling to the front through the five round 15s that sit on top of the next gem duo bead. I turn back to the back and then again a group of five We'll proceed for five and I will continue to wrinkle <laughs> through, the, through the round 11. I wrinkle back through the last two round 15s and then I complete the coil by picking up three round 15s and by beading again through the group of five on top of the gem duo. And Nancy is here too. Welcome, Nancy. So, just a moment. I will show you this is how it looks like and I will need to still add the fourth part and then to complete this last little detail. So how is it going with this part ladies? I'm adding five beading through the round 11, beading back through the last two round 15s, and then picking up three round 15s, and beading through the five round 15s on top of the next gem duo. And now there is only the last little detail to, to complete. So I pick up only three round 15s and I bead through two round 15s that I picked up at the very beginning of this step. And now I can bead through the round 11, the initial round 11 again. So this is how it should look like from the front and from the back after step nine. And Ariane says, when you know where to slither around, then everything is fine. Indeed, slither, that word I know actually from Harry Potter. And fun fact, I have read and then watched and read again all the Harry Potter books, uh, also because of the Beading School Club, because maybe like two years ago, we were talking about book recommendations. I was looking for something new and fun to read. 
and Ula and several other ladies recommended me reading Harry Potter and there was the house of Slytherin. So since then I know the word Slither. <laughs> <laughs> so Nidhi says very clever design Susie indeed and actually my little motive is done I don't want to believe how fast this went even with the frogging <laughs> and the mistakes so, ladies, I'm back. Do you have any questions left about, about the little motif? I will also put the beaded piece on screen so you can take a better look at it. Or actually, I'm going to show you the ideas for the motif that Susie put together. So I'm curious that how will this lead you and how will your little motifs end up? And Susie says, I didn't have time to test the a four millimeter rhinestone in the front instead of seed beads in the cross. If someone will do it, please share the picture in the club. Indeed. That would be super nice, I think. Do I have a rhinestone somewhere here? For sure. I usually have all kinds of beads and components in my favorite shapes and colors on several different bead mats <laughs> lying around me. So that was easy to grab a four millimeter rhinestone and to give, give you an idea, idea. This, this is how, how it would look like with the rhinestone in the middle and I love it Susie. Thank you so much for sharing your idea. <laughs> oh, and then I'm really happy to see that you enjoy and enjoy reading Susie's motif and Susie says thank you, I learned myself with that routine. And, and that's, that's so, so nice, nice to hear. hear. Thank, Thank you, you Susie. Susie. Yes, echo, because I had two cameras. Sorry. <laughs> so, if you don't have any more, any more questions about the motif, or if you have any 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 other questions, then also please let me know. I would love to answer everything. Uh, before before I say goodbye today, please don't forget about the Miyuki deal. It's twelve percent until Tuesday, five p.m. in the afternoon Central European time, and the bundles are even better. And next week, next week, uh, I will be traveling together with Adam. We have our anniversary, 20th anniversary. So I won't be at home, but Susie and Veronica and the treasury team will, of course, take care of you. There won't be a coffee time with Erica. Uh, at the moment, the echo should be gone because there is only one camera on screen, so uh, it should be okay now. I'm sorry for the temporary trouble. So, uh, yeah, there won't be a coffee time next week. However, I am preparing a video for you for Friday to still bring you inspiration so where is the picture i forgot to upload the picture just one moment to show you what's coming just a sec Okay, Cynthia says the echo is gone, then I'm happy. 
and thank you so much everyone for your well wishes <laughs> i am really looking forward to it and this is coming on friday uh, next friday in the form of a recorded tutorial an unusual one because i was actually recording most of it when i was just getting better with covid <laughs> so i couldn't talk i'm showing you what's going on this is called lady lily by the way so i will be showing you on the video that what's happening and i checked it it should be pretty clear but i couldn't talk because my throat was hurting so much mm, so i hope you will not mind if you are, this is a bead embroidered piece. We haven't done bead embroidery for a pretty long time. So I thought that it is time on one hand and on, a, on the other hand, I really started to miss bead embroidery. So at least a little fast motif for you. You will need a flat back bead or cabochon to the middle. I beaded it with an origami flower bead. One of these came in the signature box when we had the beading school birthday, but there are like a few other colors coming next week, what I can tell to you. Or you can also use an extra low 18 millimeter cabochon for the, for the middle instead of the origami flower bead. Uh, or anything else, actually. Then you will need also wax solos and lily flower beads. And I used also Miyuki slender bugles and then only a bunch of seed beads, uh, Miyuki Delica size 11s and a few pieces of Miyuki round 11s. As this is bead embroidery, then you will also need for it a piece of ultra suede and a backing so it can be again a piece of ultra suede or leather or fake leather what i discovered that i love applying a piece of i had it here just an example prepared yeah so i love applying uh, iron on interfacing on my ultra suede to the back of it before I start embroidering to make it sturdier and to keep its shape. So this is how I work with my ultra suede nowadays. And you will need, of course, thread and glue, glue because it's embroidery, a thread, needle, and some findings to make it into the type of jewel that you like. And a little addition to the middle, is a rhinestone, a preciosa suvan rhinestone that I removed from the metal setting <laughs> and I just glued it on on the origami flower. So this is it. Tutorial coming on Friday and if you are new to bead embroidery and you need more than my not talking video <laughs> while having COVID, then we have a blog post explaining you how to start with bead embroidery, all the tools and all the basics. And there is also a series of bead embroidery tutorials on the YouTube channel of Beading School. I really recommend to start with the Traveler series. And there are then, I think, four or five more bead embroidery tutorials to like level up with your bead embroidery skills if you need that. And if you do that, if you do even one piece of Traveler, then you will be able to bead the Lady Lily without even me talking because it's super easy. So that's all for today, I think. Thank you so much to, uh, to, for, for all of you for listening and being here with me. Uh, and uh, and 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 yeah oh i see um, see more questions that's why i'm like getting distracted faye is asking will you be getting the bracelet bags back in stock 
we don't have them at the moment, but if you please send an email to info at beadingschool.com, then we will be able to give you more information. And Orit is asking, hi Orit, what is the white thing attached to the street? Uh, it is called iron-on interfacing. It's like a porous white fabric thingy, seamstresses tailors use it when you make for example a belt or you make a buttonhole then uh, then this is what makes your your fabrics or you make like a color then this is what makes the fabric sturdy so it's super cheap you just need to go to a sewing store in your area one side is sticky so you turn that to the ultra sweet and then you iron it from the non-sticky side because if you iron the sticky side then the glue will melt on your onto your iron <laughs> so be careful about it and yeah i love it and i don't like lazy because <laughs> it's white and it's expensive and i don't have it so I have the ultra suede and this, and that's my personal preference for bead embroidery. But that can be very, very different for everyone. And laces is also great stuff. It's just not my personal choice because this is easier and more comfortable for me. And thank you so much for all the, all the well wishes. And Sarah, so good to see you too. And Lea and Elena, Niti, Antoine, Cherry, Gunnar, Faye, Orit, Corinne, Brit Marie, thank you so much, everyone, for your kind words and happy beading. And enjoy the weekend. Take care, ladies. Bye bye.